Hey, how's going all? Just back again with another live stream. Um, it's a bit of an impromptu one. Uh, I was just wrapping up reading um, uh, the Maccabees, you know, in 4th Maccabees. And I came across um, a set of chapters that, um, you know, I thought would be very useful, you know, to talk about and um, explain, you know, the way that Israelites are. And this to me is fascinating every time I go through these um, books to get a better and better appreciation for the group that the Bible is written about and then their characteristics and i hope that this will be you know an encouragement in the last days because these are god's chosen people and it's going to be very very clear when i go through these chapters um why you know they're god's chosen people because of their um their personality and how stubborn they are about god's laws and so you know just uh just be aware of that so i'm going to go through um four maccabees five to seven just read them, you know, and then give my opinion on them as I, as I go. But I think it'll be very clear to people, <clears throat> you know, that this is the characteristic of God's people. And um, this is what we have to model, you know, and um, just know that it's a very, very high standard and it's not for very, very many people. And it doesn't matter. You know, my channel is for the people that are striving to be in this group. And just know that you're not going to find very many people who are going to want to be like that. And um, that doesn't matter. And um, so one example I want to give to my own life is that there was a time, you know, when I went to grad school. Um, hey, Kirk, how's it going, man? Good to see you. <clears throat> I was in grad school and um, I was in over my head. You know, I think for people who know my channel and the times that I've described that experience, like I was in way over my head. I wasn't surrounded by people that I was up to their level, you know, and then I found that out very, very quickly. And then it became an incredibly awkward experience for almost three years of my life. And I want people to know, you know, that um, if they don't already, that the kingdom is going to be run by Israelites. And so if we don't have an appreciation for who they are on this side, then they're not going to want us to be in the kingdom. <clears throat> We're not going to, quote, fit in. And so I don't want anybody else or myself to go to a place that is foreign to them and they don't fit in. And then I've gone through that and it was I would never want to go through that experience in my life because it was very, very clear right from the beginning that I didn't fit in, you know, and I never would because I was in over my head. I was in a place around people that cared about things to a much deeper level than I did. And um, just know that that's the way the kingdom is going to be. And so we have to prepare ourselves now, whether we're an Israelite or not, to understand and appreciate their mindset. Because then they're going to look at us and be like, what the hell are you doing here? Get away. They won't even let us in. And so I'm going to prepare people, you know, just like I feel like I'm trying to prepare myself for the way that that group is. The actual Israelites, not these retards that you see on YouTube. And so it's important to know that. And then we get, obviously, Christ is the prime example. So it's not like we need any more. But it doesn't hurt to um, cover some other ones, you know, in particular in the Apocrypha and Maccabees which uh, are incredible collection of books. It's absolutely amazing. And so this why that's why my channel is like, I don't want any actors. That's why I call people actors because actors will not understand what I'm about to read. And really they won't understand any aspect of the Bible because Christ can't deal with an actor because the actors don't evolve. You know, even just reading some of um, end time teachers interactions with LOP, he's not going to change his position on the microchip because he's an actor, you know, he has to read from his script. And so that's not anybody that Christ or the Israelites would associate with, because you have to evolve and become more like Christ, because that's a process, you know, no, no one person is going to immediately be like Christ, except Christ. But as long as you were able and willing to evolve and learn, and, um, you know, become more and more like Christ, then God can quote work with us. Okay, the Israelites can work with us, even if we're not one. And um, we can serve them. And so I haven't seen that, you know, everybody's just sticking up for other people. Oh, no, I, they didn't do this and all that kind of stuff. We're not we're not looking for people to make excuses for other people. Only the actors, um, you know, do that. And so my channel is for the small group of people who are not actors. And then we'll understand these words. And um, we're not sticking up for anybody who's an actor ever. OK, they're just a waste of time to even talk about. And we have to on this side because there's only actors. The kingdom is going to be filled with non-actors. And we're going to read about a group, you know, um, uh, the Israelites in the Bible everywhere, but in particular in 4th Maccabees, that um, that's the way they are. Okay. And so if you want to be there, you better get used to it. 
that's the way that they are. Um, so, you know, just uh, brace yourself, you know, and then just know this is a very relevant message to the times that we live in now because we have to get ready to die, you know, potentially for God. And that looks very, very clear that that's the case, you know, in the times that we live in now. So, um, you know, just um, just know that that's the quote spirit of this lesson. And so the Bible is not for actors and it, they won't make sense to them. You know, they'll be like, what are you talking about? Like, you're taking everything too seriously. That's the kind of mindset that they'll have. But I want people to understand in this account with Eleazar, um, he took God's laws very, very seriously. OK, so a lot of us now are waking up to the fact that the Bible's true, but it's never too late to start, you know, appreciating God and his laws. And um, even if it's for a day, you know, if we do it sincerely and deeply. So do that, you know, for all of us, you know, for not actors who come by my channel, we keep each other accountable. But for the actors, get lost. OK, or unless you just want to come here, I'm going to make fun of you. Um, for the little time that I have remaining, but this message won't make sense, you know, to the, to the actors. And then there's other people again, like when you, and this guy, Bible defender, 144, uh, we had this back and forth. And then all of a sudden I asked him, you know, does the earth spin and then it's crickets. And so you can call out, you can find out the actors very, very quickly because they're not going to talk about certain things like the flat stationary earth, like this earth is hell like America being Mystery Babylon, you don't really have to go down very long of a list to dismiss a majority of the earth and then lump them into that actor category. And so, you know, this is for the few people that are not actors, you know, that come by my channel. And um, this message will be very timely. You know, it's it's what we need to hear, you know, in the times that we live in now, because um, the Israelites of the Bible um, were extremely proud of their God, extremely proud. And that's all they were proud about you know, that they will boast about him 24 seven. And so um, that's what I would highly recommend all of us do now. There's nothing else to brag about. Okay, like you and I, we've been deceived on many, many things, hopefully not anymore. And, you know, government was involved in that. So and our family potentially was involved in that. So what what do we have to boast about? Okay, like how uh, gullible we are? That doesn't make sense. Okay. So all it, only good use of our time at this point is to boast in uh, in God you know, in the God of this Bible. And honestly, even if this God wasn't real, these are good examples of how to live by anyway. Like somebody like Eliezer that I'm going to read, this is the kind of character we should have. This is the amazing thing about the Bible is that even if it wasn't true or real or whatever, then there's excellent examples, you know, in it. And then um, we need we need some kind of rescuing, even if the Bible or any religious book didn't state that, we would still cry out to be rescued. OK, but thankfully, the Bible does have that narrative for a select few to be rescued. But we would cry out to be rescued anyway, even if it was a quote generic God. OK, but we don't have a generic God. We have a very God, uh, amazing God. And then he has a very particular group of people that he likes to interact with. And we're going to see why here. It's going to be very, very clear. And so, um, you know, just know that it's um, this is the Israelites and it's going to be very, very clear um, why they're God's chosen people. You know, it's not just all, oh, you know, what, like they're, they're just pretty laid back and they're, they're the funniest people, you know, they have the best sense of humor and all that kind of stuff. And, um, that's not the case. Okay. Not at all. Um, they're, they do not mess around. They do not play around like the retards that I see on YouTube all over the place. Um, that's, uh, that's not the way they are. Okay. Are you kidding me? We're going to read exactly the way the Israelites are. Just got to respond to this text. Uh, just playing a little golf later. Um, but so, you know, just don't be confused because God's going to hold us to the standards of the Bible. If, um, you know, when we're out of the body and in his presence and we didn't figure this out, he'd be like, why? <laughs> why didn't you figure it out? Like my son's example was not enough for you. You got seduced by these morons on YouTube. Um, depart from me. <laughs> okay, bye. And all that kind of stuff. So don't don't be confused. OK, this is the way the Israelites are I'm about to read here Four Maccabees five. The tyrant Antiochus sitting in a state with his counselors on a certain high place and with his armed soldiers standing around him, ordered the guards to seize each and every Hebrew and to compel them to eat pork and food sacrificed to idols. And so God's left hand side, their job is to get God's right hand side to violate God's laws. And then Satan and Christ were the exact um um, you know, pinnacle example of that where Satan would tempt Christ, you know, to like break God's laws, you know, and sin. 
and then use use God's power for for evil, you know, and that kind of thing. And so it happened even with him, you know, at the highest highest level. But it happens even on the low level, and then we see that happening right now in a, in real life, real time, right now, right before our eyes. So that's their job. Okay, this is the tyrant. Okay, in um, Eleazar's day, if any were not willing to eat defiling food, they were to be broken and on the wheel and killed. So they're going to be tortured. Verse four, when many persons had been rounded up, one man, Eleazar by name, leader of the flock was brought before the king. So now we can see what a true leader of the Israelites is going to be like. We're going to get an example. Let's let's uh, listen to this. He was a man of priestly family, learned in the law, advanced in age, learned in the law, advanced in age and known to many in the tyrant's course uh, court because of his philosophy. So in modern day, it would be a, a righteous preacher, you know. Oh, OK, that's that. That's that religious guy. OK, that's who we represent to people in our life, potentially. Oh, that's that guy. OK, talking about the Bible and all that. Verse five, when Antiochus saw him, he said, uh, before I begin to torture you, old man. So he's like making fun of him. I would advise you to save yourself by eating pork. Save yourself. What do we see with this narrative going on right now? And what's in those things? OK, um, what's inside of those? OK, everybody knows before I begin to torture you, old man, I would advise you to save yourself by eating pork. This is the same spirits in the past that are right now. And I want people to know there's people on YouTube who are going to help you. Religious people who even claim to be Israelites that will say, no, it's OK. This one's OK. The next one's going to be evil and that kind of thing. I would I would if you have a functioning brain. OK, I would go by what the Bible says. OK, not these bird brains on YouTube for I respect your age and your gray hairs, although. You have had them for so long a time. It does not seem to me that you are a philosopher when you observe the religion of the Jews. When nature has granted it to us, why should you abhor eating the very excellent meats of his animals? So they're like trying to like compel you, just like we see now with um, Anderson Cooper and Sanjay Gupta and all these people. They're like, you've done this already. OK, you've already taken an MMR shot, a polio shot and all this kind of stuff. What difference is it now? OK, that's their logic. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, all these people. They're like, what, what, what difference? Just another animal. OK, but God said, don't do it. OK, so then let's let's hear how he responds to this. It is senseless not to enjoy delicious things that are not shameful and wrong to spurn the gifts of nature. It seems to me that you will do something even more senseless if by holding a vain opinion, OK, which is God's law is not vain. By holding a vain opinion concerning the truth, you continue to despise me to your own hurt. So he's like, you're offending me. Do you think the Israelites care? Okay, I don't care if I offend any of you retards that come by my channel. You people don't have a functioning brain. But, um, and these people don't care either. Okay. <clears throat> Verse 11, will you not awaken from your foolish philosophy? Dispel your futile reasonings. Adopt a mind appropriate to your years. They're like, you're old. Why, why are you believing in these superstitions and all that kind of stuff? Uh, philosophize according to the truth of what is beneficial. So they're like, no, acquiesce into our understanding so you can stay alive. OK, and then we'll see how he responds and have compassion on your old age by honoring my humane advice. For consider this, if there is some power watching over this religion of yours, it will excuse you from any transgression that arises out of compulsion. So now they're saying, oh, don't worry, God's that God's going to forgive you. No big deal. Just go ahead with it. Verse 14, when the tyrant urged him in this fashion to eat meat unlawfully, Eleazar asked to have a word. When he had received permission to speak, he began to address the people as follows. So he was in order. OK. These are righteous people. They have a they they have a great temperament, you know, about them, and they're not just um, blabbering random nonsense on the street. Okay, are you kidding me? We owe Antiochus, who have been persuaded to govern our lives by the divine law. Okay, wait a minute. Let me read that again. Govern our lives by the divine law. Okay, because Christ is the fulfillment of that law to perfection. Okay, think that there is no compulsion more powerful than our obedience to the law. So where are these people on YouTube or in real life that are like this? That's why I'm confident in the position that I'm in, because I don't see it. OK, and it's not going to happen later. All oh, these monsters are going to then, you know, create kids that are going to honor this. Are you kidding me? In the next generation, when the current generation um, blasphemes God with every breath that, that you morons breathe. Are you kidding me? Um, uh, verse 17 Therefore, we consider that we should not transgress it in any respect. OK, verse 18, even if, as you suppose, our law were not truly divine and we had wrong and we had wrongly held it in it to be divine, not even so would it be right for us to invalidate our reputation for piety. So they they think of both cases. They're like, hey, even if it's not divine, this is creating a sense of piousness in us. So we're going to do it anyway. 
okay? Because it's producing righteousness. So this group thinks about all cases. Okay, they're like, let's say even what you say is true. They're like, well, it's making us pious. So it's, it is divine. And so they think, okay, they actually have a brain. Wow, shocker, right? Verse 19, therefore, do not suppose that it would be a petty sin if we were eat defiling food. He's like, no, every aspect is incredibly important. Verse 20, to transgress the law in matters, listen, it's either small or great, is of equal seriousness. Okay. Uh, these morons like end times teacher are like, where does it say in the Bible that you can't wear that? Where does it say that? That's what he's asking me. These people are mentally retarded. Okay. And so do you think that this person, as we read this story, needs, an ex needs um, you know, to like rifle through the scriptures to know whether to go along with that? Are you kidding me? And so, no, these people are just for us to be made fun of. And if you're not making fun of them, then I'm going to make fun of you because you're stupid. So these people take all aspects of God's instruction extremely seriously, like it's a life or death situation. <clears throat> um, let me read verse 20 again. To transgress the law in matters either small or great is of equal seriousness. OK, and this is reaffirmed. Wow. Consistently with the book of James and everywhere in the Bible that you offend one, you offend all of them. Whoa, wait a minute. All the Israelites, did they all get together and have a meeting, you know, and like, hey, let's let's have the consistent narrative. No, it's the same spirit. OK, for you morons that haven't figured that out. They all act the same way. OK, and they treat the laws of God as divine because it came from God. And then without the laws, you have death. OK, and that's what we're seeing in the times that we live in now <clears throat> on a mass scale. For in either case, the law is equally despised. It's like if you offend it the smallest amount, you, you despise it. You hate it. All of it. Okay. Verse 22, you scoff at our philosophy as though living by it were irrational. Okay. Verse 23, but it teaches us, listen, to self-control so that we master all pleasure and desires. And it also trains us in courage. Okay. Where are these people on YouTube? Okay. I haven't seen one. I just see a bunch of acquiescers. Okay. A bunch of morons. <clears throat> um. But it teaches us self-control so that we master all pleasures and desires. And it also trains us in courage that we endure any suffering willingly. Okay. And so these are the real Israelites. Okay. Not you monkeys that are on YouTube. Verse 24. It instructs us in justice so that in all our dealings we act impartially. And it teaches us piety so that with proper reverence we worship the only living God. That's in verse 24, 44. Okay. And so... These people are the real deal, okay? They don't make up random stuff like you dummies do and come by my channel, trying to impress me and it just re further reaffirm that you're stupid. Do these people sound like they're trying to impress anybody but God? Do you think they have to make up anything or whatever? They live this way. It's their life or death, okay? And so they don't come here and just blurt random gibberish like you people do, okay? And then they're trying to get me to do, okay? But I'll just call you stupid. And say, no, tell me what God told you or shut up, okay? And live like this, which no one does. Verse 25, therefore, we do not eat defiling food for since we believe that the laws, listen, this was established by God, okay? That's a law that's above your government, okay? That's above us, okay? And it will never change. If this God is real, he's literally above us and his law is above us. And it's not going to change. He's not changing his mind. Okay, well, you know that stuff in Deuteronomy or whatever, Leviticus? Yeah, I was just kidding. No, whatever. Just make up whatever you want. That's cool. Uh, that's not the case. Okay. Therefore, we do not eat defiling food. For since we believe that the law was established by God, we know that in the nature of things, the creator of the world is giving us the law, has shown sympathy towards us because it's a way to live properly, you know, and to build up those good characteristics that he mentioned earlier. He has permitted us to eat what will be most suitable for our lives. So there's a logic behind it. Okay. There's a reason why we don't put pork in our body in any way, not just through the mouth. Okay. There's a reason for it. <clears throat> um, it would be tyrannical for you to compel us not only to transgress the law, but also to eat it in such a way that you may deride us for eating defiling foods, which are most hateful to us. So these people, all they can do is spew quote spew out i say this respectfully the truth and the law they're not they're programmed to honor god's laws like the robots that are programmed to honor the beast many of you people that come by my channel this group are programmed to honor god's laws and it's a life or death situation every day because they realize that there are people now in modern day that are going to try and get them to dishonor god's laws even to the smallest offense and so this is the group that you should be looking for if you don't find it here and go be it yourself. OK, but um, <clears throat> you're not going to find it is what I've concluded. Verse 28, 
but you shall have no occasion to laugh at me, nor will I transgress the sacred oaths of my ancestors concerning the keeping of the law. Okay. Not even if you gouge out my eyes and burn my entrails. This is how serious they are. Should, anybody type me an example of somebody on YouTube who, who thinks like this. I'll wait. Okay. Are you kidding me? This earth is a joke. <clears throat> um, so that's serious. Okay. Verse 31. I'm not so old and cowardly as to be young in reason or on behalf of piety. So he's like, just because I'm old doesn't mean that I'm going to be silly and naive. Okay. And stupid. Verse 32. Therefore, get your torture wheels ready and fan the fire more vehemently. They're like, bring it on. Okay. I don't care. Make it hotter if you want. Okay. They don't care. Okay. This group does not care about anybody else's opinions except the laws of God. Okay. That's their responsibility to keep that, okay? Without God policing them, they're going to do it. And that's offensive to you retards that come by my channel. And I like that, okay? I want to offend stupid people regularly. So should you. Verse 33, I do not so pity my old age as to break the ancestral law by my own act, okay? Verse 34, I will not play false to you. They have no guile in their mouth, okay? This group. <clears throat> oh, law that trained me, nor will I renounce you, beloved self-control. So it produced righteousness. Okay. Verse 35, I will not put you to shame. Philosophical reason, nor will I reject you, honored priesthood and knowledge of the law. Verse 36, you, O king, shall not defile my honorable mouth of my old age, nor my long life live lawfully. So these are the Israelites. Okay. If you haven't um, figured that out yet, <clears throat> this is the way that they act. They're not taking money from people. Okay. And then going to get, going to get prostitutes or anything like that. Are you kidding me? And um, call the Bible the skip cheese. Are you kidding me? And you morons go to their channel and then think that you should take them seriously. You people are disgusting. Verse 37, my ancestors will receive me as pure as one who does not fear your violence even to death. Verse 38, you may tyrannize the ungodly, but you shall not dominate my religious principles either by words or through deeds. So like, I don't care. <laughs> that's, what, that's the attitude that I have. I don't care what this government says. It's just, it's a joke, okay? It's not even to be taken seriously. And I don't even like having to comment on it. They did because they were diplomatic and they knew that this was to encourage us who would read it later. But it's shameful for us to even have to comment on it, okay? And then you morons want to come by here and, and further those conversations and not talk about salvation and getting the hell out of here, which is all we should be talking about right now, every minute of every day. Verse uh, 4, Maccabees 6, when Eleazar in this manner had made eloquent response, they're, they're, they're good with words. Why? Because they're speaking the truth. Okay. So then they're very clever. The spirit quickens. The, the actual Israelites. Okay. When Eleazar in this manner had made eloquent response to the exhortations of the tyrant, the guards who were standing by dragged him violently to the instruments of torture. Verse 2, first they stripped the old man, though he remained adorned with the gracefulness of his piety. Okay. They clothe themselves in humility. Okay. That's why the two witnesses will be wearing sackcloth as a sign of their humility. But when you go and talk to them, they're going to actually be humble. That's why we know who the two witnesses are. And we know who the two witnesses are not. Do you know that? The person who's listening. <clears throat> Verse three, after they had tied his arms to, on each side, they flogged him. While a herald who faced and cried out, faced him, cried out, obey the king's commands. They're still trying to get him to obey his commands. He said, no, bring it on. But the, cour the courageous and noble man, like a true Eleazar, was unmoved as though being tortured in a dream. He, he just, I'm assuming that they have the ability to go to at the next level spiritually, where this is not a problem for him. Okay. He's like, bring it on. No worries. Okay. These are real spiritual people. Okay. Unlike you ding-dongs that come by my channel and try and bait me and others into stupid conversations. <clears throat> um but the courageous and noble man, like a true Eliezer, was unmoved as though being tortured in a dream. Okay. Yet while the old man's eyes were raised to heaven, his flesh was being torn by scourges. His blood flowing and his sides were being cut to pieces. <clears throat> Christ is, an, is another example of an incredible Israelite, okay, who faced incredible torture. Christ's example was unique because it was by his own people. Okay, and it was in particularly brutal. Verse 7, although he fell to the ground because his body covered, so his, sorry, although he fell to the ground because his body could not endure the agonies, he kept his reason upright and unswerving. 
one of the cruel guards rushed at him and began to kick him in the side and make him get up again after he fell. But he bore the pains and scorned the punishment and endured the tortures. Like a noble athlete, the old man, while being beaten, was victorious over his torturers. In fact, with his face bathed in sweat and gasping heavily for breath, he amazed even his torturers by his courageous spirit. Do you think these people are the type that goof around? Are you kidding me? Does this sound like a joke? Okay. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I can just say whatever I want about God. No big deal. You know, I was like, yeah, whatever. Like, I th my opinion is this. I think this. I think Mystery Babylon this and that and all that kind of stuff. Does that does this sound like that God's going to be okay with that? I'm asking any of you retards that are listening. D does this sound like that God's going to be like, yeah, no, no worries. Yeah, go share whatever opinion you want. No big deal. Does that sound like this God? Okay. Uh, these people will take death with a smile on their face before violating one of God's laws. Okay. Just know that, okay? We're responsible to know that now because it's obvious, okay? If we didn't know that from Christ. Verse 12, at this point, partly out of pity for his old age, partly out of sympathy for their acquaintance, from their acquaintance with him, partly out of admiration for his endurance, some of the king's retinue came to him and said, this is where this group, it's, it's impossible to not love them because they're, they're stubborn and they're righteous. And so this is where even their enemies will respect them, okay? Just like Christ, of course. And so even while they're torturing them. Okay. <clears throat> I don't respect any of you retards, okay? Because you don't you don't have a freaking clue what the hell is going on. And all you morons just want to be here for, for longer. Okay. Does this sound like this person cares about tomorrow or the next day or the day after? No, it looks like he only cares about the laws. Okay. <clears throat> That's all he cares about. That's all the real Israelites care about. Um. I'll read that again. It's amazing. Verse 13, partly out of sympathy from their acquaintance with him, partly out of admiration for his endurance, some of the king's retinue uh, came to him and said, Eleazar, why are you so irrationally destroying yourself through these evil things? We will set before you some cooked meat, save yourself by pretending to eat pork. So they're like, hey, it's not even the real thing, but just eat it. So then we'll let you go on this. And what do you think he's going to do? Okay, verse 16. But Eliezer, as, uh, though more bitterly tormented by his counsel, cried out, Never may we, the children of Abraham, think so basely that out of cowardice we fiend a role unbecoming to us. Okay. For it would be irrational if having lived in accordance with truth up to old age and having maintained accordance with the law, the reputation of such a life, we should now change our course. He's like, I'm at the end, dummy. <laughs> okay. Like, what, what do you think I'm going to do? And ourselves become a pattern of impiety to the young by setting them an example in the eating of defiling food. Okay. So he's like, people are going to read about this, which we're reading and listening to right now. It would be shameful if we were, if we should survive for a little while. And during that time, be a laughing stock to all for our cowardice. So these people wanted to leave a legacy. Okay. <clears throat> With their life, you know, being tortured. All they can do is worship God. Okay. <clears throat> even while being tortured viciously. It's a very, very high bar in the Bible. It's not just, oh, I'll pray to Jebus and then he's going to save me. He's going to whisk me away to paradise. <laughs> are you kidding me? You people are retarded. Uh, verse 21, and be despised by the tyrant as unmanly by not contending even to death for our divine law. Let, let me read that again. Even contending to death for our divine law. The Bible is not written for very many people, if you haven't figured that out yet. Verse 22, therefore, O children of Abraham, die nobly for your religion. And you guards of the tyrant, why do you delay? He's like, bring it on. Okay, hurry. Okay, I want to get the hell out of here. Like I'm saying, I want to get the hell out of here. Okay, because none of you morons resemble any of this that I'm reading here anywhere in the Bible. Okay. And I don't either, but I don't, I want to be around these people. Okay. <clears throat> Look at these morons. Um, uh, verse 24, when they saw that he was so courageous in the face of afflictions and that he had not been changed by their compassion, the guards brought him into the fire. Now they're turning it up. Uh, there they burned him with maliciously contrived instruments, threw him down and poured stinking liquids into his nostrils. When he was now burned to his very bones and about to expire, he lifted up his eyes to God and said, You know, O God, that though I might have saved myself, I am dying in burning torments for listeners for the sake of the law. Wow. 
verse 27, 17, 14, uh, 2, 7, 14. Okay. God's elect. <clears throat> Be merciful to your people and let your punishments suffice for them. So they knew that God was doing this to them. Okay. And so I know that. Okay. Do you know that? Um, God is involved in every aspect of pruning his people's life, every single detail. Be merciful to your people and let our punishment suffice for them. So this person had the mind of Christ. He's like, I'll take the punishment for them. Okay. And so they're all the same. All the Israelites are the same. The real ones. Okay. Not the actors. <clears throat> Verse 29, make my blood their purification and take my life in exchange for theirs. Okay. Verse 30, and he said this, the holy man died nobly in his tortures, even the tortures of death he resisted by virtue of reason for the sake of the law. Let me read that again, for the sake of the law. Okay, wow, this is an amazing account. <clears throat> Verse 31, admittedly then, devout reason is sovereign over the nations. Oh, sorry, over the emotions. Verse 32, for if the emotions had prevailed over reason, we would have testified to their domination. <clears throat> but now that reason has conquered the emotions, we properly attribute to it the power to govern. It is right for us to acknowledge the dominance of reason when it uh, when it masters even external agonies. It would be ridiculous to deny it. OK, because they understand that this law will produce a reasoning, a logic, and then it will allow this that person who does that to master even external agonies. So it puts everything in subjection to it. That's what the law does when it's honored. OK, I'm not saying I'm an example of that, but. He certainly is, and Christ obviously is as well. So I'll read that again. It is right for us to acknowledge the dominance of reason when it masters even external agonies. It would be ridiculous to deny it. Okay, that's the times that we live in now. It would be ridiculous to, to deny this divine law for the sake of Joe Biden, okay, and all the other retards that are on YouTube. <clears throat> that would be stupid, okay? Even for your spouse, your kids, that would be stupid, okay? I have proved not only that reason has mastered agonies, but also that it masters pleasures and in no respect yields to them. Okay. Wow. Where are these people on the earth? Where, where is this person? Okay. I don't see it. You won't see it. Because these people don't tolerate evil. Okay. They do not. <clears throat> Uh, you know, just know that, okay, we're responsible. If you want to cling to this God, we have to be responsible to know this God and who he looks upon and respects. He respects this man, Eleazar, and obviously Christ, who's a supreme example of this type of torture. And then he caps it all off by asking those to be forgiven. Okay. And um, so he's the supreme example of that. Uh got to block these people <laughs> it's like it just again shows this world is completely stupid um yeah son good to see you man sorry i, I didn't see that um, message uh shalom awaken pennsylvania good to see you man and i said hi to kirk what's up so <clears throat> okay back to this uh for maccabee 7 for like a most skillful pilot the reason of our father eleazar steered the ship of religion over the sea of emotions OK, so that's what happens when you have real religion. It takes control over a person's emotions. It puts the emotions subject to that religion and that law. OK, that's the purpose of it. And though buffeted by the stormings of the tyrant and the overwhelmed by mighty waves of torture, in no way did he turn the rudder of religion until he sailed into the haven of immortal victory. OK, no city besieged with many uh, ingenious war machines has ever held out as did that most holy man. So God would look down upon Eleazar as being more powerful than America, you know, or China or the Navy or whatever. These are God's Navy seals. Okay. These are God's Navy seals. Okay. Do these people sound like they're clowning around at all? <laughs> I'm asking somebody respond in the chat. Okay. Do these people sound like they're kidding around? Oh, no, no worries. God will return in 10 more years, 15 years. We're, we're fine here. We'll figure it out. We'll, we'll, we'll wear a mask and look like a clown. 
do these people sound like they're they're going to do that? People need to wake up. Um, <clears throat> I'll read verse four again. No city besieged with many ingenious war machines has ever held out as did that most holy man. Okay. Although his sacred life was consumed by tortures and racks, he conquered the besiegers with the shield of his devout reason. Okay. <clears throat> For in setting his mind firm like a jutting cliff, our father Eleazar broke the maddening waves of the emotions. Oh, priest worthy of the priesthood, you neither defiled your sacred teeth nor profane your stomach, which had room only for reverence and purity by eating defiling foods. And so this man was pure. Okay, this is an incredible sacrifice. Verse 7, O man in harmony with the law and philosopher of divine life. And so when you have adherence to the law, you have the potential to have life. Okay. And then when you have people who don't honor God's laws, then you have death. Okay. Which is a majority of you people. Um, verse 8. Such should be those who are administer, administrators of the law, shielding it with their own blood and noble sweat in sufferings, even to death. Okay. Got people who are bored today. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, Verse 9, you, Father, strengthen our loyalty to the law through your glorious endurance, and you did not abandon the holiness that you praised, but by your deeds you made your words of divine philosophy credible. Let me read that again. But by your deeds. Oh, I thought this wasn't a workspace thing, according to Good Servant and all these other retards on YouTube. Listen to this. But by your deeds, you made your words of divine philosophy credible. Okay. Faith without works is dead. Um, oh, age man, more powerful than tortures. Oh, fierce elder. Uh, sorry. Oh, I'll read that again. Oh, age man, more powerful than tortures. Oh, elder, fiercer than fire. Oh, supreme king over the passions, Eleazar. Verse 11. For just as your father Aaron, armed with the censer, ran through the multitude of the people and conquered the fiery angel, so the descendant of Aaron, Eleazar, though being consumed by the fire, remained unmoved in his reason. Okay. You morons get offended when I... Say, state something and then I don't waver from it. That offends you because you people are retarded. Um, these people are the same. Okay. Do you think they're negotiating a single thing with their co government? Do you think this person sounds like he's negotiating? Oh, no, that's cool. I'll, I'll wear a mask. It, it's fine. You know, it's, it's okay. Not a big deal. All that kind of stuff. And then you morons want to come here and tell me that, no, no, you should be happy here. Okay. Do these people sound like they're, uh, they're playing around? And are willing to negotiate. Oh, okay. Well, if Biden says so, and if you say it politely, then I'll, then I'll do it. Okay. Does, it, does that sound like these people to you? <clears throat> Verse 13, most amazing indeed. Though he was an old man, his body no longer tense and firm, his muscles flabby, his sinews fe uh, fe feeble, he became young again. Okay. In spirit through reason, by his brain, the way he thinks. Um, and by reason like that of Isaac, he rendered the many headed rack ineffective. So the torture didn't matter. It didn't mean anything. Oh, man of blessed age and of venerable gray hair and of law abiding life, whom the faithful seal of death has perfected. Okay. So these people know that they're being tested by God. And then the only way you can be tested is if you're, if you want to be extremely righteous, then you have to go under extreme pain. Okay. And so he, this person was perfected. Okay. So this is what God wants. Okay. It's for us to be perfect like the Heavenly Father is perfect. Okay. Uh, not to negotiate with sinners and evil people. That's why a lot of you retards would be better off not writing anything on my comment board. Because I'm not negotiating with you idiots. Okay. Either you learn something from my channel or get the hell away. Okay. Get the hell away from me. Okay. And get away from me in this place. Okay. You people are dumb. And so I'm not negotiating with any of you retards who don't even have a functioning brain. Verse 16, and therefore, because of piety and age, man despised tortures even to death. Most certainly devout reason is governor of the emotions. And so our emotions are not supreme. Okay. What is supreme is reason. And then above that is the law. And above that is God because he made those laws. Okay. That's the hierarchy. And so women, a lot of them are governed by their emotions. So a lot of them are lawless. 
Okay. And then you retards go and follow them. Okay. And I have in the past and I'm not anymore because I find them stupid. I laugh at them as you should. Anybody who doesn't want to honor God's laws in the days that we live in now, you just laugh at them. Okay. And are serious about it. And then they, they have to view these words as sacred. How many people, if you were to go out in the streets and tell them about this story, would even uh, appreciate that at all? They'll be like, oh, he's not a rapper. Oh, he doesn't have a huge following or whatever. No, he's just, he, quote unquote, just an old man who lived lawfully and then died a torturous life, uh, torturous ending. People will be like, what's the big deal? <laughs> okay. But God views him as more powerful than an entire army on earth. Okay. And so God would give him a trillion subs in his mind. That's how powerful he is and influential um, to what um, the way God thinks. Okay. <clears throat> and that's all that matters. And so to earn position with God, we have to be like this. Even if we don't go through this kind of torture, which hopefully we do not, because it's not for very many people to be able to withstand that. Um, it's, it's incredible, you know. And so it's because of people like this that we maybe don't have to go through that. You know, Christ would be the prime example. <clears throat> I'll read verse 16 again. If therefore, because of piety, an aged man despised tortures even to death, most certainly devout reason is governor of the emotions. Verse 17, some perhaps might say not all have full command of their emotions because not all have prudent reason. And so any lack of control we have over emotions is because we don't have control uh, or we don't have prudent reason, which comes from obeying God's laws. OK, and so if you feel like there's something in your life that's shaking you, it's because there's an aspect that you're not following God's laws. That's the same for me. OK, and then that's a judgment that you have to deal with. OK, but. Perfect submission to God's laws will make sure that you have perfect control over your mind. Okay. And then all you're going to be able to do is all you're capable of is to be able to speak like the Israelites speak. Okay. And you'll think like they do. And then you'll say things that they do. And then you'll prophesy like they do, which I don't hear. Okay. And so, and I never will. And so just know that they're a very special group. That's why if I'm not of the elect, I, I, I'm happy. I'm excited because they're going to be like this. They're not going to be more more riffraff than me. Any of you dummies that come by my channel don't have a freaking clue what the hell is going on. It's going to be like these people. And I, I, I would be uh, enamored. Uh, I would be humbled to serve Eleazar or Christ, obviously, or any of the any of the Israelites, the elect. Uh, I don't I don't care. Like I would be their chauffeur. OK, I'll clean their their house. OK, <laughs> like whatever they ask me to do, because then I'm going to just learn, you know, just from being around them. So. I have no issues with that. Okay. But they're not going to be um, less lawful than me or dumber than me. Okay. Which a lot of you people clearly are. But no, it's going to be like these people. Okay. So just getting in is the important thing. Because these people have full command of their emotions. And they did that through prudent reason, which comes from honoring God's laws to death. Okay. They're not trying to figure out a way to live here longer like you people are. I don't want to be here. <laughs> I want to be around these people. Okay. Like Eliezer. And even if it's like five of them, I don't care how many there are. I just want to be around these people. Okay. Uh, but as many as attend to religion with a whole heart, these alone are able to control the passions of their flesh. Let me read that again. This is, this is an incredible book. I would highly recommend people read four Maccabees. Okay. The whole thing. I'm just going over this, these few chapters, but um, and of course, it has the sequence in all these as well. <clears throat> but as many as attend to religion with a whole heart, these alone are able to control the passions of the flesh, since they believe that they, like our patriarchs, um, sorry, I'll read 18 again. But as many as attend to religion with a whole heart, these alone are able to control the passions of the flesh. And so that's why these Israelites are very, very unique, because they have the law which will then create this ability. And you won't see that in any other religion. That's, again, one aspect of uh, why they're unique. These alone are able to control the passions of the flesh. Verse 19, since they believe that they, like our patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, do not die to God, but live to God. So for you retards that haven't figured it out, when you're out of the body, you're actually alive then. You're not alive right now, believe it or not. Okay, I know that's shocking to people, right? These Israelites knew that they're in hell. Death and hell are going to be cast into the lake of fire. So you in the body and anybody in the body is a form of death. It's a judgment. Okay. Except for the elect in the last days who don't experience death. And then the people throughout human history have been taken away. The few people. But 
this place is a place of death. And so when you're out of the body, you're alive. That's what I just read here. And that's everywhere in the Bible. Um, I'll read verse 19 again. Since they believe that they, like our patriarchs, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, do not die to God, but live to God. Okay. <clears throat> no contradiction, therefore, arises when some persons appear to be dominated by their emotions because of the weakness of their reason, which comes from not obeying the law. So when they see people uh, who are like being blown around and tossed away, tossed around by the wind, like Christ even said, if you firmly root your life in him, you won't be wavering at all. You won't be double minded. These people see, they'll find out in a minute that you're double minded. And then they're going to see you kind of flap away, you know, in the air. Like I see with the people that come by my channel. Yeah. The next thing that'll come around, you'll go and latch onto that. Okay. Do these people sound like that? <laughs> okay. Like they're rooted in the law, which is a, gives them control over their mind and then allows them to speak in a way that honors God. Okay. That's what they're all about. No contradiction therefore arises when some persons appear to be dominated by their emotions because of the weakness of the reason. Okay. They're weak mentally. Okay. My channel is for the people who want to be or are strong mentally. Okay. And that's not for very many people. <clears throat> what person who lives as a philosopher by the whole rule of philosophy and trusts in God. These were philosophers. Okay. They're law abiders. They're um, prophets. Okay. They're teachers. These are kings because they had the mindset of a king. Because when you lead as a king, you have to have rules. Okay. And so that's the Israelites. That's the elect. Just know that. <laughs> um, verse 22, and knows that it is blessed to endure any suffering for the sake of virtue and would not be able to overcome the emotions through godliness. Okay. And so that's how they overcome the uh, emotions is through godliness. Okay. Verse 23, for only the wise and courageous are masters of their emotions. Let me read that again. Verse 23, for only the wise and courageous are masters of their emotions. Okay. <clears throat> and so why are you people coming by my channel talking about emotions? Okay. That's not what my channel is about. We've, I've done that, you know, and then chased around women who are um, demons, lawless, many of them. My channel is for people who are done with that. Okay. We now want control over our mind completely and the way to do that is by honoring god's laws okay and then ask for us to be able to honor those forever not just for a little while okay it's kind of fun now no we want to be around other people like eliezer who are going to honor that forever okay and then we can build something together okay and it, i won't cheat you and they won't cheat me and then they're not going to lie to you and i'm not going to lie to them you know it's shocking because everybody's a liar and an idiot in the times that we live in now and then they just um, fake it Okay. Yeah. God told me this. Really? God told you that? Oh, okay. Really? No, but don't see that in the Bible anywhere. Okay. Um, really? And so you people are just a bunch of terrible actors. Okay. Do these people sound like actors in the Bible? Really? This guy is an actor. This is absolutely amazing. You know, this, um, these few chapters and the entire Bible is incredible, but <clears throat> Maccabees in particular gives us a multiple examples of people who will laugh at the face of oncoming torture when it requires them to dishonor one of god's laws they find it funny <laughs> they're like oh really oh you think you have some control over my life no people are stupid and then that's the attitude that i have in the times that we live in now okay because the people administering the quote torture are stupid okay and the people who are the narrative that we see going on right now death is welcome for the israelites they want it quickly OK, because then they're alive to God. Your spirit leaves your body and you go back to God. And then you ding dongs are making 10 year and 15 year plans here. OK, I don't want to make a 10 or 15 second plan here. OK, because when you're out of the body, your soul goes back to this God who then has created people like Eleazar and then the other the brothers and the Maccabees and Christ, of course, and all the prophets. And um, that's who I want to be around because those people are alive because they have been you know subjected themselves to god's laws and then that produces control over their their mind and so that's what i want okay what do you people want <clears throat> you got to figure that out i'll just go through the chat really quick and then um end it <clears throat> uh yeah definitely even if lop is like yeah definitely even if the bible wasn't true there are some great examples in christ teaching actually does lead to enlightenment and peace that passes all understanding yeah Christ is the walking fulfillment of the law of God, the logic of God, what God likes and what he dislikes, what he loves and what he hates. So we saw it in motion. We don't have 
Eleazar's entire life, you know, documented as much as obviously Christ, but it would be the same thing. Okay. They, they're only going to speak things that are consistent and um, with, with their, with their God. Okay. And so that's Christ's example without a doubt. <clears throat> Anderson Cooper is definitely, and them are demons in dead skin suit. Yeah. They're just actors. Um, tortured in a dream is sometimes just as bad as torture in real life. I'd say. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. So that's it. I just, I didn't really have anything more than that, but, um, if the, if this chapter, these chapters and thing don't resonate with you, just unsubscribe and go away. And I don't care who you are. Just, I'm going to just start blocking people's comments if they're stupid, if they're inconsistent with this. Okay. So this live stream is a fair warning to people. And so if you don't respect this or want to be this way, then just go find another YouTube channel. Okay. Cause I'm not going to like tell you anymore. Okay. I'll just drop the link to this live stream or I'll just block you because you're stupid. And so this is the kind of person that I admire. Okay. And again, Christ is the supreme example, but Christ is on another level because he had incredible amount of power. Okay. And we obviously I'm assuming Eliezer had certain amounts of power too, but this is a, a realistic example. Again, this man is, is older in age. Okay. And so we, we can model these behaviors, you know, and work towards this, even if it's for a day. Okay. God will credit us for all of it. So if this book, <laughs> again, ultimately the whole Bible doesn't resonate with you, then go away. Okay. If you're looking for a way to kind of politic and stay here longer and all that, like, no, you're taking it too seriously. And it's not a big deal. You know, it's like, just wear the mask and go along with it. And whatever they ask you in the interview, it's okay. And all that a little lie here and there just to kind of stay here. No, that's, I'm not doing that. And we've done that. Okay. I've done that, been there, done that many, many times. Now I read the Bible and I'm like, Whoa, wait a minute. Wow. With new eyes. Okay. And obviously this has already always been there, but we didn't know that the Bible was true until now we know it for sure because of the flat stationary earth. But, um, uh, now we're like, we should model our behavior like this now, okay? And then when we, re we realize when we do that in the world that we live in now, this world is going to reject us. It's going to do exactly the same thing that th they were doing here to Eleazar. They'll try and tempt you. What's the big deal? Okay, we won't even put pork in it. We'll just give you like something else, okay? It'll be empty. It'll be an empty vial, okay? But we'll just just do it, okay? Just to put it on TV. That he'll, what do you think Eliezer would do? He'd be like, get the hell away from me, okay? With your stupid needles. Um, and so, um, you know, just know that, okay? We have this example and just know it's everywhere in the Bible. I just was fascinated by this one because um, it's the first time I've come across 4th Maccabees, 3rd and 4th Maccabees. Because I've read 1st and 2nd Maccabees, you know? I have that in this book. <clears throat> And so uh, now, uh, you know, I basically only have three major books to go through, Enoch, Jubilees, and Jasher. And then, you know, I've completed this book, which I would highly recommend, actually. That's how I found um, Fourth Maccabees. And so um, that's my example. You know, that's the example that I'm going to live by. Again, Christ is an obvious example, but he's just on a next level. You know, like he's, it's sometimes difficult to relate to Christ because of how amazing, you know, he is and how much power he had. But Eleazar is a man that we can relate to. He's a man older in age. Okay. He wasn't like all of based on his strength. He was strong in his mind. Okay. And so people on this earth will get offended when you're strong in your mind. They'll be like, oh, you made up your mind already? <laughs> like, are you sure? Okay. You don't want to go back and forth and all that kind of stuff like Sanjay Gupta and um, Anderson Cooper talking to that nurse. Are you sure? You know, like, is there anything we can do to talk you into it? All that kind of stuff. Like, that's why we, me, a non-actor, normal person can't be ever interviewed like that publicly because we would just absolutely make fun of them and we'll rip into them and laugh at those stupid people. And so that's why they have to get other actors to sort of play along, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And so that's why, you know, don't worry if you're offending people, you know, in the times that we live in now, everybody on this earth, the majority of them are completely retarded. Okay. And they would read this and be like, Hey, Eliezer, what's the big deal? Okay. Like, are you sure you want to really go through that? You know, it's, it's, it sounds pretty bad. You know, it's, just, it's a little piece of bacon, not a big deal and all that kind of stuff. And so um, that's the way the world is. Okay. And so my channels for people who are not like that. Okay. Which is not very many people I've looked. Okay. 
Infinite Loves, if you had the opportunity today to own your own acre of land to live on any way you choose, would you do it? Um, yeah, I mean, that, that's fine. <laughs> I have no issues with that. Um, I mean, that's virtually impossible at this point because um, it's expensive, you know, to own the land and then to maintain it, of course. And then you have to be skilled to do that. But that's ultimately what we're asking for, you know, and what the kingdom promises is that God will allow that for his people and then make it safe. You know, so the other people won't come and take from it, you know, and destroy it and have power outages and all that stuff, which are prophesied. So which God is doing. But and so, yeah, that's ultimately what we're asking for. And then most importantly, it's not just a place to live, a safe place to live, but something to do that's productive. That's the most important thing. And we don't have that now. And if you think that you have that now, then you're an idiot. OK, you're stupid. Uh, both Moses and Elijah fasted for 40 days. Elijah went to the strength of one meal of 40 days. Yeah, those are the two witnesses. Okay. And if there are anybody else, okay, then those two people, then the Bible is a joke. It's not two nations. Okay. It's not two people in Israel or whatever and all that kind of stuff. Okay. The two witnesses are two men, two quote dark skinned men who will be in America. Okay. And you're going to find out if you talk to them, they're going to be like this person here, Eleazar, and like Christ, of course. So if that doesn't happen, then the Bible is a fairy tale. Okay. And then, but it was still good because it gave us like examples of how to live. But um, those are the two witnesses, you know, Moses and Elijah as um, LOP saying. Um, Teresa's like, yes, thumbs up with new eyes. Yeah, that's good. The man is like, hey, everybody in chat. Uh, I have the Maccabees included in my KJV Bible, the Prophet Old and New Testament. That's right, man. And people are offended. At yeah, exactly. It'd be good to get your hands on third and fourth Maccabees LOP. Um, I'm sure it's free online somewhere, but yeah, these, these are amazing, you know? And so, um, it's absolutely incredible. So I've done getting all the sequence ones that I've, um, need to, I don't think I'm going to push to put too many more, but I'll go through those last three books and see if they're in there. But that's, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much kind of at the end of my quote unquote, um, teaching. I just was like amazed by this because it's a good sort of, um, reminder of the way the actual Israelites are. Okay. And we know that in Christ, of course, Christ not walking around wearing a mask or doing anything like that. Are you kidding me? And so um, we know that from Christ, but sometimes that's a too lofty of a example. So then there's someone frail, quote, frail and old, obviously mentally very strong, Eleazar. And it's an incredible example. It just shows that God's law is essentially the fountain of youth. Okay. If you honor it, it just gives you a certain vitality. And then what the Bible says here and what I say everywhere, that it actually leads to eternal life. And so it's never too late, okay? For me and for you, it's never too late. Even if we do it for a day, just for the rest of this day, <laughs> whatever, like it's not funny, but like we just do it, you know, and we do it with a smile on our face. So, and then obviously I don't even want to invoke God's laws with the narrative going on right now. Cause it's so stupid. Like you don't even need God's laws to, to resist what's going on now. Cause it's like literally insane, but we get credit for it. If we say that's why we're not doing it because of Leviticus 1928, because of just common sense, but you know, that's what we're invoking, you know, to say that, no, if you even bring that near us, then we'll take death with a smile on our face. Okay. We, we don't want to be here anyway. I don't. So, um, it's not a big deal, but uh, that's right, man. And people are offended. At everything. Yeah, the religious people are offended. OK, good servant uh, will get offended when you tell him that um, it's not just, you know, salvation by faith. It's for a particular group who are like Eleazar. He'll get offended by that. And he'll get offended when you tell him that the earth is hell. And so he's Antichrist. OK, and then if you tell um, good servant or end times teacher that the two witnesses are the two people that you were talking about earlier, then he'll get offended. OK. And so the religious people are getting offended by the Bible. And so what does that tell you about the religious people? OK, um, they're not like these people. <laughs> OK, you tell Eliezer or something about the law. It'll be like food. It's like you just gave him a meal. He would. I, I don't need to eat today. You just you gave me enough food today. That's the way these people are. You tell people on YouTube and the people around you something about the Bible. It's like you, you just gave them some disgusting food and it gives them a stomach ache. OK, they get repulsed. OK, and then they'll go and attack you. OK, so like, just know that um, good servant, this uh, this demon still has a video on his channel calling me mind of Satan. 
because I'm teaching what the Bible says that this earth is hell. And that's every reference to hell in the Bible. And so, and then you morons go over there and then co-sign him. Okay. So like you people are finished too, but um, that's the way the world is. Okay. And so if the religious people, the Christians are offended by the Bible, what do you think the other people are going to be like? The people who don't even read the Bible or know anything about it. You think they're going to warm up to the Bible? Okay. Are you kidding me? And so they hate it even more than those people. And so, well, actually, maybe not actually, I take that back. The Christians, the cold Christians and the cold Hebrews are the most evil people on this earth because they know what the Bible says and then they willfully, you know, don't honor it. And so they're just actors. Okay. So just know that. So that's, um, um, that's what's going on. <clears throat> uh, yeah, my family gets sick of it whenever I quote the Bible. Yeah, exactly. They're programmed to be repulsed by the Bible. And so my channels for the few people that are not wired that way. Okay. If I tell a flat earth boxer that he's not supposed to be doing something and then he doesn't just say, oh yeah, you're right. Okay. And then he just goes on doing it. Then he's an actor. Okay. And then you people who go and defend him, then you're an actor too. Okay. Because what we know now is we read the Bible on our own. Oh, we're like, oh, wait a minute. W wait, the gospel is going to get preached by angels. Oh, that means that I don't have to do it. The Bible does say what we have to do. It says, come out of her, my people. Don't be partakers of her sins. That's what we have to do. Okay. We have to avoid people in the times that we live in now. Okay. Revelation 18, four is what I'm quoting. And so again, the people who are affiliated with the Bible are most offended when you teach them about the Bible. So why is that? I ask anybody just to consider that. Why is that the case? Okay. What's so unique about the Bible that when you read it to them, the people who should be appreciating it, why do they get angry? And then call you evil and then want you to get out of here, you know, and that kind of thing. And so there's got to be something to it. Okay. There's power in it. And then that's, everybody knows that because once you honor it, like Eleazar, then the whole world becomes meaningless. All of the vices that they can put against you, all the like torture doesn't matter. <laughs> You're like, well, you welcome it quickly, bring it faster increase the temperature. Okay. Like in the lion's den, no worries. Okay. If you make it hotter, then I'll be able to leave quicker. So make it hotter. No, no worries. Okay. And that's the mindset of Eliezer here in four Maccabee. So that's my mindset. Okay. Bring the evil on. We, we want to get out of here quicker. Okay. Make it more stupid. All you people increase the stupid. Okay. And all your channels, just flood your channel with more and more stupid. And so then I'm like, well, good. This is definitely not a place that has any hope. And so no worries. And so um, that's our mindset. Uh, I know someone who's willing to sell one acre in Georgia for cheap. So many things are possible where there's a way. Yeah, good, man. Go for it. Okay. I'm not lifting a finger to cultivate this earth. I want this land to be burned according to what the Bible says. So you can go buy that piece of land. Okay. And then if it doesn't happen, I'm not going to be mad. Okay. I'm not going to be jealous of you infinite love. If you go and do that and are successful and raise a family and learn how to cultivate the land, I'll be like, great, man, you did it. Okay. Um, go for it, you know, and I'll, I won't be uh, bitter. Oh, look at this person. You know, he's living a happy life. No, I'll be like, that's good, man. Good for you. You did the smart thing. However, all I can warn you and others is that the Bible says that America is going to be burned with fire. Okay. Not fake fire, not with a little match. Okay. With fire real fire. Okay. So that land that you're going to buy in Georgia is prophesied to be burned. And I don't care if you're on it. Okay. With your family or whoever, because if you're burned in that fire after the great tribulation, that's body and soul that's destroyed. So good luck to you. Okay. I, I won't be mad if it, it doesn't happen. Okay. I'll be like, well, good. At least infinite love found a place that he can be happy, but you you've been warned. OK, that's what the Bible says is going to happen to a place called Mystery Babylon, which is obviously America. And so and it's not going to be fake fire, according to uh, Flat Earth Box or Revived or other stupid people It's real fire. OK, and so that's needed for the Bible to come true. And we cannot wait for it because America is the axis of evil on Earth. So it has to be burned because it's modern day Sodom. So. Good luck, man. <laughs> That's all I can say. I'm not lifting a freaking finger to help this place. I'm not planting a single physical seed in the ground to raise a plant or a tree or anything like that. I'm not planting a tree, okay, on a land that's going to get burned with nuclear fire, okay? But if you want to, go ahead, okay? Have fun. 
uh, Teresa is like, do you have any opinion on people who will follow Opus Day? My Catholic parish was almost overtaken by a group of Opus Day followers who started attending in large numbers to follow. Our new yeah, I had a friend um, and a colleague um, who was uh, one of the members of Opus Day in grad school. And I remember not long ago, I reached out to him about the flat earth and he didn't reply. And so it's just a, it's a fraud in that regard, obviously, if it's associated with the Catholic Church. But, um, you know, I would say I think what I know a little bit about them is that they're basically like they're sort of missionaries kind of thing. And so it's a it's a cult, basically. But, um, you know, he seemed like a nice guy, you know, not like a bad guy or anything. But then they're obviously not truthers or anything like that. But um, I'm only familiar with Opus Dei because of him. You know, he was a smart guy. You know, he's actually a professor now in India at one of the top schools, but I don't know anything beyond that. So, again, just so you know, you might be new. I view pretty much everybody as an actor. The only people that are not actors are the 144,000 in Revelation 7 because their mind was touched by God, by angels. And so that's the only group that I care about. <clears throat> and when I find out right away that you're not one of them, then I just I view you as a joke. You're an actor. Okay, it doesn't mean that you might not say something that's true. And so that's the way you should treat me as well. Because if I end up not being one of the elect, which will be found out in a few months, then just take my channel as an FYI for your information. And I'm going to change my channel name to the mind of Shireg at that time. So it applies to me as well. Okay, but that's what I'm on a search for now that I know what to look for because of examples like Eleazar and obviously Christ. But um that's the kind of person that I'm looking for on YouTube or in real life. And I realize I'm not going to find it. OK, and so you might have found it here. And so not again that I'm any, anywhere near on his level, but um, I might have been sealed, you know, and so I mean, I may be one of the non actors on this earth and there's not many of them. The Bible numbers them and they're all men. And so they have no guile in their mouth. And so that's a small group of people. When you think about how many people are on the earth, there are billions. And so, um, but I know one thing I know is I'm not an actor. And so that person who I knew from Opus Day, he's an actor because he won't talk about a lot of things. Okay. And so, um, you know, he won't talk about the evils of the Catholic church or anything like that. That's why even people like Mother Teresa, they're actors. Okay. People think, oh, Mother Teresa did all this stuff. Um, People are like, yeah, Mother Teresa did all this like humanitarian stuff, right? She wouldn't speak out against the evils of the Catholic Church. And so she's a Satanist. Okay. And so Gandhi is the same. You know, if he's not calling out the evils in the governments, he'll be quick to call out the evils in Christianity, which was true. Of course, I, I like your Christ, but not your Christians. That's a famous quote that Gandhi said, but he won't call out the evils, you know, everywhere worldwide because he's an actor. Okay. And so the unique thing about God's elect is that they'll call out the evil everywhere in themselves, first and foremost, and everywhere. OK, well, it doesn't matter who it is. OK, their family, their government, their corporation, everybody, actors on YouTube. And that offends people when I do that. They're like, oh, you don't want to have some allegiance with these people. And oh, don't you want to be friendly? No, I don't. Not at all. Absolutely not. I want to be friends with Eleazar. OK, uh, Moses, Elijah. OK, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. OK. Christ, of course, and Christ calls his servants his friends. And that's who I want to be friends with, okay? Not you morons that come by my channel, don't have a freaking clue what you're talking about. And don't take offense to this for the people that aren't stupid. But all you retards that come by my channel and try and tell me that God told you something when he obviously didn't. And so I hate you people because you're just terrible actors. You'd rather just make up stuff than not just shut up, okay? It's so difficult for you just to you know, just maybe just shut up. You know, it's like so complicated for you. But you said just make up stuff. Oh, Mark of the Beast is a microchip. Ah, 50-50, this and that. You know, I don't want to be here. This world is stupid. People, we don't even know what the shape of the earth is <laughs> with any clarity. Are you kidding me? And so you're, you're in a home. You don't even know how big the house is and then where the evil is and all that kind of stuff. And you expect me to want to stay here for more than today. You people are retarded. And uh, if, you're, if you're planning to stay here for more than today, you're, you're mentally retarded. I say that with confidence. Do you think Eleazar will be hanging around here <laughs> wearing a mask? Oh, yeah. No, no, no worries. I'll wear a mask. Chew on a little bacon, you know, when, I, while I'm, when I'm going into the store. Does that sound like him? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Dude, I want people to wake up, okay? 
follow the God of the Bible and do it with a whole heart, but understand what that God's like. Okay. I think he's goofing around. <clears throat> yeah that's cool um again that, that stuff for me not to be rude Teresa, but that stuff's not interesting you can chat with people about that or whatever but um that stuff's irrelevant to me just so you know i teach which is what the bible says that this whole entire earth is going to be burned with fire and so no i don't care about opus day or anything like that that's you might as well just ask me um you know about the kardashians okay, it's the same thing and I don't care about either of them the same. So those people are all actors. And so, um, you know, that's just what it is. The only people, again, that I want to, that I would be interested in, okay, if I were you, which you're free to do whatever you want um, within the realms of what God has prescribed for you, but I would only be concerned about the Israelites and the, not just that, the elect, okay, like Eleazar, because they're going to be running the show in the kingdom, okay? So find out, you should be asking me, what do you think of them? Okay, but you should know based on my channel, that's all you should care about. Okay, if the Bible is true, if the Bible, if there don't exist, then the Bible is not true. Okay, then there is no elected, then who cares? But if it is true, then these things are not just quote stories. Okay, they're real historical accounts of a person named Eleazar, Jesus Christ, Moses, Elijah, and all these people. And then those are actually God's first fruits. And then they're going to be people that are actually running an actual kingdom that's actually here on earth. Okay. And that's the thing you should only care about. Okay. Who cares about these people? <laughs> okay. Um, doesn't matter. This whole earth and the people who destroy it are going to be burned with fire, according to the Bible. First, God's going to put sores on his left hand side, then burn them. So um, anything else besides that is just gossip. And that's not interesting for me. Um, all right. Thanks again for stopping by. Enjoyed it. Take care. Peace.